This guy claims he can get a house in the Philippines for only $120 a month. His name's Dude Abroad, and it's right next to the beach. Okay, so I wanted to see if that was actually true. So I moved here. I'm in the Philippines in a remote island called Siargo in the Pacific. I'm gonna let you know in this video if that guy's like off his rocker, if he's a clown, is he a high? or if it's really true. And it's good timing because I was in Bali and my visa expired. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how much it really costs to live here, what's it like, and is it worth living here as a digital nomad? All right, let's go. Okay, so I'm in the Manila airport. I just arrived in Manila. Look at this. Reminds me of home a little bit. It's been a year since I've had one of these, let's see. Yep, pretty, pretty close. Same prices back in Canada, 230. Canadian. First thing is look for a SIM card. SIM card only costs a um, hundred pesos. Let's go check out Manila. It's 34 degrees, maybe 35 degrees right now. So my first night I stayed in Cuevo, Kuzon, and it was $25 a night with an There's like all these lively, the nightlife is really lively. All this amazing uh, food on the street. Most people in all the stores and shops speak English, so you don't have any problem with communicating. All the shops, um, especially when you get to the food courts, like you get into the malls and you go to the food courts, they're all in English. All, it's all American companies and in, in mixed into their culture. It's, I don't think most tourists venture into Kuzon City. Probably the only one, I think. So the next night I went to Passe, which is 15 minutes from the airport. Really cold air conditioning. I had my own couch, TV, Netflix. Uh, there was shared bathrooms. It was $25 a night, which was great. So I'm on my way to a really nice area in Makate, and um, I'm just outside my hostel here. You can see that it's uh, all locked and secured. It's a big gated community, and you can see the surroundings. Um, you know, it's, the area is like not the greatest, uh, but it's really close. I'm like a six minute scooter ride to the nicest um, area in Makate. The first two places I stayed at, uh, Kuabo, and Passe were really sketchy. I was, I have to say, I was a little unsettled. There's uh, armed security guards with shotguns and sidearms uh, at every mall entrance. It's a little unsettling to get used to at first. Uh, so anyways. So this is Makati. I'm actually near a place called Power Plant Mall. And it's actually really, really nice. You know, these are some nice residential buildings, condos, and, um, this is rare. This is not, this is like maybe a two block radius. Most of Manila is not like this. Most of it uh, of, uh, outside of this area, Manila is, is kind of undesirable. It's not really, most people wouldn't like it. And I didn't really enjoy it. Like this, this I could see myself living in this area, um, having these cafes and shops and stuff. So there is some nice parts of Manila, but say like someone playing the grand piano. This looks like a nice Starbucks. So I can see myself living in this area. And they have a really nice supermarket here. It was everything you could possibly uh, want. Uh, they have, it's huge, and it was really, really nice. And this was other parts of the mall. You can see it's really luxury. There's um, really high-end brand names that you'd probably be familiar with. Uh, it's it very luxurious. And this is my Airbnb that was close to that mall. Uh, it was only $20 a night US. Cozy bathroom and shower. And then you can see I got my desk set up here and then bed. The AC is super cold. And there's a microwave and pot, sink and stuff. Just everywhere you go, the Wi-Fi is awful. So I bought three SIM cards and each SIM card kept breaking. It's, it was working for a few hours and then it would stop. So it was really frustrating because I couldn't use the Wi-Fi or Google Maps, so I couldn't make my way around the city. Real luxury uh, Wi-Fi here. You know, one of the things I might consider about living here as a digital nomad is if I was in this area of Makati where 
it's really pristine and, and nice. And then you could fly out to the other islands. They're only about 30 to $90, depending on when you go, to fly to all the different beautiful islands. I'm going to Siargo tomorrow, so I'm really excited about Siargo because they have surfing. It's a hot spot for digital nomads. They have a, a digital nomad mindset and community there. Their surfing is some of the best in the world. Ah, so good. I finally arrived and settled in my hostel and it's behind me. And I'm just enjoying this San Miguel and just relaxing a little bit. It's much cooler than Manila. The ocean is literally three minutes from me. And I'm looking forward to surfing every day. This is one of the most famous surf spots in all of the Philippines. It's considered the surf capital of the Philippines. There's a famous surf spot called Cloud Nine. But which is more advanced, but they also have beginner and intermediate surfing as well all over right here So I'm really excited to be here. The hostel's really nice. I had a bad experience with hostels in Bali There was a good one. And there was a really bad one. I did my research on this hostel and um, Like I read every review. I went through like 20 different hostels in the area Now this is 20 bucks a night US. There is hostels for $11 a night in the area But you get what you pay for you pay $11 a night there was horror stories of rats. There's horror stories of um, uh, noise problems, it, like construction noise, seven in the morning, con air conditioning either not working or service sleeping at the desk. It's just this is what the inside of the hostel looks like. These are uh, four bunk rooms, and uh, they're really nice. They're very private. They're all covered in wood, and they just slide open, kind of like a Japanese style type thing. And uh, you can see inside there. I was zooming. Actually, the Wi-Fi is amazing. I had a Zoom meeting and it worked great just with my tablet. It's very quiet. And these are the bathrooms here. One of the biggest questions I had was how's the Wi-Fi? And luckily it was great. They have Starlink, uh, which is by Elon Musk, and it's really taking care of everything and it works really, really well. You can see here some digital nomads just working away here. There's a bar and then there's a quieter section in the back to work as well. Nightlife, there's actually a really big nightlife here in the uh, on the island and every night there's a party going on somewhere in the island so there's a schedule and different um, they're hosted at different areas they're all close by so uh, there's that going on too for people that are looking for that so it's a, it's a fun place too and uh, I'm not a big into the parties now um, but I I was in bed at 10 o'clock and uh, I had a nice amazing sleep and I was up at 6 a.m. Uh, surfing the next day but that's definitely here for those who are into that because it's everywhere um, so which is kind of cool too I might go check out something one of these days the cheapest decent place apartment I found to live is 300 US so not the 120 the guys talking about either it's friend prices and you know somebody uh, it's a friend of a friend or uh, the small island so you probably make lots of friends eventually you can probably start negotiating better rates but just for the general market on Facebook groups and Facebook marketplace and Airbnbs. The cheapest I could find was 300 US and that was on another island called um, Bohol Island and it's actually I think it's cheaper to live there than Siargo and it's cheaper to fly there from Vanilla as well. So um, that's the cheapest I found so far with 300 US. Um, it's not bad. And that wasn't that was a studio that wasn't a separate house so $120 for a separate house you're really pushing it like I I can't find that anywhere. So I think you're more looking around anywhere from three to four, 500 US for uh, a month for your own house. So this guy's a little off on his numbers, unless he's like, he's got connections.